About six months ago, I was looking to convert my site from Gatsby JS to Next.js as I'm a big fan of Next.js. But after hours of honestly kind of wasted time, I realized Next.js was not the best framework for me to use for my personal site. So I decided to switch to Astro. So I'm gonna tell you all about some of the struggles I had with Next.js and some of the amazing features in Astro that make creating that type of site specifically super, super easy. So first off, Next.js is one of my favorite frameworks. I use it for a lot of demos. You've probably seen it a lot on this channel. And so this is not a shot at Next.js. This is just kind of looking at not necessarily limitations of Next.js, but some of the, I mean, maybe limitations in terms of developer experience, specifically for creating a certain type of site. Now for my personal site, I don't have a ton of full stack functionality. Mainly it's blog posts and it's maybe information about talks, but information that I was storing inside of embedded markdown. Previously, I was using Sanity IO as a headless CMS, but I wanted to move all of my content into my source code so that I could edit it right there. Other people could do PRs to fix things, etc. And so I started going through this migration to move this from Gatsby to Next.js. And there were a lot of things that just became really obvious that were uh, tough with Next.js and Markdown. And there may be tools that I missed, there may be better options now, but here's kind of some of the things that I went through. So to be able to load my data, my Markdown files, I was having to write like custom JavaScript. So you can see in here, um, I had to use like the, the file system APIs in JavaScript. I would have to manually map, map over those, grab the specific um, information that I wanted by replacing the MD and the Markdown file to then get the slug and then pass it in. And same thing down here. And, and so the, the problem with this is that it's a little too manual of a process. Like this is such a common thing for people who create blog posts that it's like, why would there not be tools to take care of this for you? And I'll show you kind of the equivalent in Astro in a second. The other thing that was interesting is like had to get a specific new package to handle uh, front matter, to get the front matter out of a markdown file. So if you look inside of one of these markdown files, like here is all of the front matter, basically just the metadata for the blog post. And so to get that, I had to have another package, um, uh, which is gray matter to be able to, to parse that and then use it. And then from there to be able to display this. So on the dynamic route for each post, I have to use React Markdown, another package that I have to install and then configure. So if we look inside of the custom React Markdown components, this thing, this got to be a mess. This is where I had a ton of my struggles, specifically doing like syntax highlighting using a theme or something like that, using Prism uh, to do the code syntax highlighting in my code snippets. And so I had to configure this like, I mean, maybe it's not overwhelming, but I had to configure this specific object to do certain things with the images, but specifically to do certain things with the code syntax highlighting. And it quickly just became a mess. And the other thing that I miss that I now love in Astro, and I'll kind of talk more about this in a minute, is kind of understanding exactly what type of content goes into front matter. This is key to the Astro piece of this with something called content collection. So I'll show you this in a second. So anyway, basically Next.js is extremely powerful, but to do the certain types of things that I was looking to do, which was work with embedded markdown and render embedded markdown <coughs> on uh, blog posts and other pages, took too much work. And so what I did is I was hearing about Astro all the time and I decided to pivot and try Astro really randomly. And then within like a day or two, I basically my migrated my entire site to Astro. So let's look at uh, some of the things in here. One of the biggest things, probably the most important thing, is the idea of content collections inside of Astro. So with content collections inside of a config object, you can define here are the different collections of data that I might have for Markdown and MDX files. So the cool thing about Astro, you'll see this in a second, it works directly with Markdown out of the box. So you could actually just create an index.md file in your pages directory and have that be a page and not have to do anything else. So it's automatically just configured to work with Markdown and works really well with MDX as well with like almost no configuration. So if you wanna then take that to the next level and define the different properties for the different pieces of content that you have, if we look in a blog collection, we have title, cover image, publication date, description, YouTube video ID, and tags around all the data that's inside of a blog post, which is really cool. So we have this defined collection API we then uh, export these collections so that now Astro Framework knows here's the different type of collections that I have. We can query based on these and we get typed IntelliSense and typed data or data types for all of these, which is really, really wild. So inside of a utils file that I created, I'm not having to manually like query the file directory or the file system. I'm not having to work with those things. I'm not having to 
manually query front data, we can simply call a get collection function from Astro and pass it the name of the collection that we're looking for. And so if we hover on this, you can see that this is going to return to us a content collection entry, or actually just gonna give us an array of uh, content collection entries that match the blog type that we have created. So here you can see that I get IntelliSense based on this, this is showing previews of this, but I have IntelliSense now or TypeScript types of here's the data that I'm querying and here's what I return. To the point that inside of blog, the like main page here, I can query these things. If I hover over posts, you can see I get that IntelliSense. If I were to take the first post, so post of zero, and then look in here, I have my front matter, or I have my the general data about the post, and then I can go uh, into data, not body, but data, and then get the uh, metadata. So this is the uh, front matter. These are all the different properties. You can, you can see that I use this below. Now, another really cool underrated thing is that Astro gives you uh, pagination functions that you can use as well. So we have a pagination thing that we can use where we return uh, calling this function. And this is something that gets passed into the static path. So it's going to take care of all this for us. If we pass it, here's all of our items. And then here's the page size that we want. So that way we can navigate between multiple different pages of content. Again, something with Next.js that we'd have to build from scratch. So inside of here, to be able to actually show an individual blog post, let's undo, I'm gonna not save those changes. We wanna display an individual blog post. We have our static paths up here, so we get the path and we get the content. And I have a blog post layout, so we pass in the front matter here, and then the blog post layout takes the things that you would expect, the title, description, uh, date, etc. It has all of that stuff. Uh, it puts it into what I have as an article header component. So that works really well. And then it gives us a rendered component. So we call our entry and we call dot render. And this just gives us the actual content for the blog post itself rendered on the screen. Again, this is all stuff that's basically built in for us. We get the extra benefit of IntelliSense in here by defining those content collections. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Now, keep in mind, I didn't do anything really for, um, for code block styling. That was all kind of built in for me. And I just had my markdown files with the certain types of, um, of content inside them. So here's the rendered blog post. I'm using Tailwind, so they're base kind of uh, article style. So I've got this. Uh, if I find one that has a piece of code in it or some JavaScript, uh, you can see that these are gonna come in. Actually, this one doesn't. Let's go back to one more. So here's a couple of snippets in here. So you see we get good syntax highlighting in here. That's really nice. We could customize that as well. But that sort of stuff comes through really well. Now, the other thing you may have noticed is the pagination in here. So if we look inside of the URL, <clears throat> excuse me, we have slash one, and that's basically the page that we're looking at. So if we go to the next page, this is slash two. And so for pagination, this is really cool because inside of here, we have a page um, keyword for this file. This is my life now. Okay, I think we're good for now, maybe. Anyways, so inside of this uh, dynamic route path uh, with the uh, slug of page or like the file name of bracket page, inside of here, we get access to what page we're on. So that's the slash one, slash two, et cetera. And then uh, we have, we call paginate and then return those posts. So that's what comes into our props in here. So on uh, data, we can grab so from the page property, we can grab uh, data and then rename that to post. So we have access to all those. You can see inside of here, I have a custom pagination component. And with that, I can determine what the next and previous URL are based on the page object. Astro is doing all this for us. I'm just passing this in as well as the current page and then the last page. And then inside of pagination, I can determine whether or not to show the previous button and the next button, et cetera. So you can see this has a pretty nice experience where I can go uh, back and then, or go forward and then back and back. And when I get to the first page, that previous button disappears because I added the logic to do that. And then I just replicate that at the bottom. Uh, so if I were to go to uh, the next page and then scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that that gets updated with previous as well. So all in all, everything that's built in here, which is support for Markdown, support for syntax highlighting, support for content collections and types using Zod to define those content collections so I know exactly what data I have and I'm not just working with like JavaScript innies or TypeScript innies. 
Uh, the built-in pagination, so many things are just built for this type of site. Now there is one clarification I wanna make because it's very easy to think that Astro is strictly for static sites for static content like this, but that's not true. So one thing that I do have is a couple of API endpoints for my newsletter. So under my uh, API pages, API, and then newsletter, this is uh, an API endpoint that actually generates like the majority of the content for my newsletter. So it grabs recent videos from YouTube, it grabs recent content from the Learn, Build, Teach community, and it spits that out as HTML that I can just go and copy and paste into my email provider. So that's one. And then another one is under newsletter, there's a subscribe. So inside of here, this is where uh, form submissions for my newsletter get submitted. So if you were to come to jameshuquick.com and you scroll all the way down to the newsletter, hit sign me up, this actually submits to my backend in Astro, API endpoints in Astro. So I can do all of these full stack capabilities, which is really cool. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is if you enjoyed that, if you're interested in Astro and you wanna to learn to build modern websites with Astro, I have a course at astrocourse.dev. And inside of here, what we build is a very detailed, supercharged markdown blog. In this case, what we're gonna do is kind of start by building a basic blog that you would expect with pagination, SEO, that sort of stuff, but really take it to the next level by adding comments, authentication, dynamically generated or automatically generated cover images, all these things using some cool technologies, Zeta, Tailwind, Cloudinary, and cover all these topics. It's really gonna be a ton of fun. It is going to be launched this summer and you can sign up for the newsletter and a 25% launch day discount Oops, uh, on the website. So this is at astrocourse.dev. I'll have a link in the description below that you can check out as well. But let me know what you're using for your personal sites and what your favorite framework is for that type of site. So I'm really curious what your experience has been. And if you're using Astro, let me know. If you're interested in using Astro, you should definitely do it. Check out Astro Course at astrocourse.dev. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in more of this content, make sure to subscribe so you can get notified in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.